Now, many questions have been discussed in relation to the new Formula One regulations for 2022. Mostly, debates revolve around the new aero or the financial constraints imposed on the teams. Few, however, discuss the tyres, which are arguably the most important factor for 2022. With that said, let's look at one of the changes that will have a significant impact on racing in the coming season. The 2022 regulations had one guiding principle, closer racing. All data points to the amount of dirty air generated by the complex aero on modern cars as the recent F1 cars were unable to follow each other closely and thus facilitate good racing. The car of 2022 will then be more focused on a phenomenon known as ground effect to generate downforce while producing less dirty air. However, when it all comes to great racing, tyres will be an extremely important consideration. Too many times, we've seen cars limp around tracks like Monaco on 40 lap old tyres, something that hasn't produced the best racing. This is something that Pirelli, F1 tyre supplier, will need to keep in mind, especially with the introduction of an 18-inch rim and tyre assembly for the first time in Formula 1. The development of the tyres has seen numerous tests, with every team except Williams involved in test days throughout 2021. A Pirelli statement on the efforts behind the new design reads as follows. The new 18-inch tyres were designed from the ground up, with every element of the tyre drawn from a clean sheet of paper, from the profile to the structure to the compounds. The design process took in more than 10,000 hours of indoor testing, more than 5,000 hours of simulation, and more than 70 prototypes developed virtually, to eventually create 30 different specifications that were tested by nearly all the teams over more than 20,000 kilometres. The statement also emphasised the importance of driver feedback and their role in the development process. The role of the drivers was crucial, with each of them contributing to the development at various points and helping Pirelli arrive at the definitive specification thanks to their feedback. Pirelli's F1 boss, Mario Isola, was later quick to point out that the new 18-inch F1 tyres work very differently than previous versions and were designed to meet the driver's requests. This tyre is designed in a different way with different targets. Our drivers are asking for less overheating, less degradation, they want to push on tyres, they want to fight on track, and clearly we decided and we agreed with the FIA, FOM and the teams to follow this direction. The new Pirelli compounds and constructions for these 18-inch tyres have been designed with the goal of reducing the amount of overheating when the tyres slide, a primary aspect that should help with closer racing. If drivers find themselves needing to manage their pace throughout a stint to look after tyre temperatures, the aerodynamic solutions to F1's overtaking problems won't be much help. It's critical that these tyres performed as promised by Pirelli. It may appear counterintuitive, but driving a few seconds off the pace has long been the quickest way to finish the race, which does not allow for great racing. With today's tyres, if a driver drove as close to the limit in the race as he did in qualifying, tyre temperatures would quickly skyrocket past the point of no return. When they overheat, the rubber hardens, reducing grip significantly regardless of how physically worn the tyres are. There is no way to recover the tyre from this. As a result, drivers are constantly racing on the verge of that thermal threshold, going as fast as they can without damaging the tyre, but it's almost always nowhere near as fast as the driver is capable of going. It goes without saying that this is not ideal for great racing, as drivers find themselves nursing tyres far too frequently as they wait for that perfect perfect hit window. This problem is exacerbated on tracks where overtaking is difficult. The new changes are intended to prevent this by providing greater durability. However, Issel admits that lower degradation will most likely result in fewer pit stops. I hope we do have less strategic variability, because the idea and the way in which we've designed the tyres is exactly to continue to have a different strategy mix of one and two stops. It's also true that with a new product, with less degradation, it's possible that we have less pit stops, so we have the majority of the races on one stop. He, however, is content with the trade-off, as long as the increased durability of Pirelli's tyres improves the driver's ability to race. As I always say, for me, it's not an issue as long as we have good races and action on track. So, if we have drivers that push to overtake, we have a lot of action. When overtaking is too easy, it's not good. It's important that the driver is putting a lot of effort in trying to overtake. That is exactly what spectators want. There is a survey made by F1 on that, and the majority of feedback was that spectators don't want easy overtaking. They want action on track and they want fighting. 
Lower profile tyres have the additional benefit of reducing sidewall deflection changes and the resulting aerodynamic wake effect. Reducing sensitivity in this area will benefit both the car design process and the resources required, something that is especially important in the cost cap era. Isla has also praised the work of the people behind the scenes for completing a monumental task despite facing the longest season in F1 history, leaving less time to develop new rims and tyres. In a busy season with all the constraints and 22 races, it was, I believe, a big achievement. We had to design a new profile, new construction, optimize the footprint, design a new range of compounds. It's a completely new product with a new approach. In addition to in-season testing for the 18-inch tyres, Pirelli held a two-day Abu Dhabi test following the season finale. Isla explained why the results of the Yaz Marina test were invaluable. In terms of comparison to the tyre development test that we ran during the season, I would say that we've confirmed that the new product has the characteristics that I mentioned before, so less overheating, drivers had the opportunity to push more. That was important in Abu Dhabi, because in Abu Dhabi we had also some traffic. That was something we could not simulate during our tyre development test, where we had one car that was running on track or two cars maximum. In terms of where, it's difficult to make a prediction because we were using mule cars, so we need to wait for the real performance of the new 2022 car. Because Williams was unable to produce a mule car for 2021, they were excluded from the tyre test. This year, however, Pirelli will use the 2022 cars, giving all 10 teams the opportunity to contribute to the development of the tyre and test its effects on the car. However, with teams facing a record 23 race season, incorporating test days into the mix will necessitate some tight logistics. What we're trying to do as much as possible is use the test days after the Grand Prix. So we go to Barcelona for the race and we try to stay there for a couple of days, Tuesday and Wednesday. But we need to be sure it's not a back-to-back -back or a triple header, so there are some limitations in some countries. I believe that now we have a good compromise in the number of the test days available and also that we can test with all the teams. Some fans have also expressed concern that the new F1 cars will suffer in terms of performance due to new aero and tyre regulations. Isla, on the other hand, contradicts a speculation claiming that at least in terms of tyres, performance will quickly match the 2021 figures. We have simulations coming from the teams. Simulations are telling us that the new cars are not much slower compared to last year's cars. At the beginning, we were talking about more than three seconds per lap. Now it's half a second, one second. So if they start with only one second difference, it means that during the season, they probably achieve the same level of performance that we had in 2021. The year 2022 will see a slew of changes, including some of the most significant year-to-year -year regulatory changes in F1 history. The tyres will be one of the most important factors, and they will undoubtedly present a new and refreshing challenge for the teams to overcome. What's encouraging is the feedback from the new tyre tests in Abu Dhabi in December, where drivers reported being able to push harder than before. Hopefully, they will be successful in their goal of producing better racing, making 2022 yet another memorable season, though it's far too early to tell. Thank you for your time. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel and remember to click the bell button to be notified of future videos. Please share your thoughts in the section below. Will the new 18-inch tyres contribute to better racing? Will the trade-off of drivers being able to push or stint be worth it if all races were one-stops? Do you believe any teams will have a distinct advantage as a result of the new tyre and rim design? We'd love to hear what you think.